Aa, herkese merhaba. Bugün Efe Infinite kategoriler hakkında bir konuşma yapacak. Biz kendisiyle aslında aynı seminer grubundan tanıştık. Beraber çalışıyorduk. Şans eseri burada da beraber aynı konu üzerine çalışma şansımız oldu. Bu iki aylık süreçte Efe hiç bilmediği bir konu hakkında sıfırdan öğrenip ve bence baya bir zor olan bir konu hakkında bir çalışma yaptı. Ona bu çalışmalar için teşekkür ediyorum. Sözü ona bırakayım. So today I'd like to give you some sort of intuition about higher category theory. And uh, before starting with categories, I'd like to give you some set theoretic uh, preliminaries so that you don't get upset with me about some known paradoxes. Well, uh, throughout this uh, talk, we'll assume the existence of sufficiently many uh, Grotean decay merges or sufficiently many inaccessible cardinals. Well, these are uh, universes such that they satisfy the ZFC axioms and they're indexed by some sort of inaccessible cardinal, which means that we cannot attain this cardinal by doing set operations on, uh, car uh, on cardinals with lesser uh, degree. And unfortunately, this will be strictly stronger than ZFC, although there is uh, ways to do uh, our constructions in ZFC, but uh, they're a lot more involved and wouldn't fit in a 20 minute talk. So with this, we can start our definition, uh, the first definition of a strict two category. This is just a uh, direct generalization of an ordinary category where we'll have objects as in an ordinary category and one morphisms, but our morphism sets will instead be categories. And the objects of these categories will be called one morphisms, And the morphisms of these categories will be called two morphisms. And of course, we'll have also a composition of one morphisms here. And uh, some examples of these structures will be given uh, as rel and cat. Cat is, for example, the two category with objects categories, one morphism functors, and two morphisms natural transformations. And rel will be the category of sets, relations, and implications which are just inclusions of relations, really. Well, the problem with this definition is that many of the constructions that we're in interested in higher categories uh, will actually end up being, uh, end up preserving associativity and unitality of one morphisms only up to some form of higher morphism. So uh, these strict categories will be too strict for our purposes. So we'll uh, relax some of the conditions and give the definition of a B category, which we define the associativity and unitality laws only up to some form of natural isomorphism. Now, an example of this B category can be obtained from a topological space, and we'll define our objects to be the points of our space, and our morphisms will just be paths of points, and our true morphisms will be just homotopies of these paths. Of course, we can compose our morphisms in uh, different ways, which are all homotopic to each other. And now uh, we can take some important theorem. Actually, we uh, end up being lucky in the case of two categories, in that uh, every strict two category ends up being equivalent to a B2 category, and vice versa. Although uh, constructing higher categories than two uh, will end up being a lot more involved. Because, well, of course, we can construct strict n categories as enriched categories, but this does not really work for weak categories. And moreover, actually, we lose uh, the equivalence that we've stated for two categories in the case of three categories. And there are uh, non strict three categories which are not equal to strict categories. Well, uh, now we can actually. Uh, give a motivation to our constructions of B categories, which will be similar to the example uh, that we've seen about topological uh, spaces. So uh, instead of stopping at two morphisms, we'll continue on uh, by defining three morphisms to be homotopies of homotopies and uh, up to N, whatever we wish N to be. And we hope in some sort of limit to attain a theory of infinity zero categories. This will be categories that 
have all morphisms invertible up to some notion of homotopy. And uh, there is a hypothesis that will assume that says infinity zero categories are basically topological spaces. So it's not really that interesting to study them, but we can uh, make this definition a little, bit, a little bit more interesting and ask for the one morphisms to not be always by default invertible up to homotopy. Now, uh, there is an easy way to construct such infinity one categories, which is the topological construction. So first we define what a topological category is. It's just a category enriched over CG, which is the full subcategory of top uh, spanned by a compactly generated with the Hausdorff uh, topological spaces. And uh, given this, we can just define an infinity category to be a topological category. But uh, as you might notice, there is a little problem here because enriched categories have associative and unital uh, laws for one morphisms that hold strictly. So, well, when we do operations on infinity categories, we'll often end up with uh, losing these uh, one morphism associators and unitors. Well, uh, equality, uh, associativity and unitality up to equality. And to stay in our category, we have to constantly straighten our morphisms after each operation. So instead, we take a hint from algebraic topology and try to construct these categories in a combinatorial way out of syntheses. So first, we'll have to categorize uh, the idea of a simplex. And we start by the simplex category, which will be given by our objects linearly ordered sets and morphisms, weak monotone maps, non-decreasing maps, basically. So since these are linearly ordered sets, we can just visualize them as syntheses as uh, below. And now we can generalize the notion of a finite simplicial complex. We can categorize it and define it just as a pre-shift on delta. Now, this is a functor, so it's given uh, by what it does uh, to objects and morphisms. Well, we end up being lucky, so we don't have to define what it does to arbitrary morphisms. We can only, uh, we can get away with defining only what it does to some co-face and co-degeneracy maps. These are special maps uh, that span all with the monotone maps. Now, these space and degeneracy maps, you can think of them as uh, just removing uh, vertices or merging them together. So for example, uh, the third face map here would just remove, remove the third vertex and return this structure remaining here. And the third degeneracy vertex would actually give us a degenerate vertex that we think of as being collapsed onto the third vertex. So with this, uh, we can actually naturally consider a category of simplicial sets as one does for all pre-sheets. Now, with this, we have some sort of special simplicial sets, the first of which is the standard N simplex. This is just going to be the representable half functor on delta. Now, since this uh, functor is just represented by N, we can just visualize it by N. For example, the standard two simplex looks like this one. And we can uh, just continue geometrically defining horns and boundaries. Well, for example, the zero horn here will just be the standard two simplex with the highest order simplex, which is the interior, and the zero face removed. And the boundary will just be the smallest simplicial set, which contains all the faces, which are just edges here. Okay, now, given this, we can define what it means to be uh, a horn filler. Well, we'll call uh, for a simplicial set X, we'll call its i horn, just a map from the i horn that we've defined earlier to the simplicial set. And to fill this horn will just mean extending it to a map from the standard n simplex. And if a simplicial set has horn fillers for all, for all horns, then we'll call it a concomplex. Now we can, uh, with this horn filling definition, 
uh, give a definition for infinity categories, which will just be a simplicial set where we have horn fillers for all inner horns, not the outer ones, and we do not require the fillers to be unique. And we can identify the objects and morphisms in a very natural way here. So these zero simplices will just be our objects or zero morphisms. And one simplices will just be our one morphisms. And we can identify the domains and codomains by applying the face maps. And for k greater than one, these will be just the k morphisms, which we take to be invertible up to a mod. Okay, now we have two constructions and uh, we ought to show that they're equivalent to have a well-defined theory. So first we'll start off by uh, looking at the geometric meaning of a simplex. This is just uh, the picture that we've, draw we've been drawing all this time actually. So an, a category object N will just be shown geometrically like this. And given this, we can actually embed all our objects in the simplex category into CG as topological spaces. And now we can actually extend this map along the Yoneda embedding, which embeds the simplex category into set delta. So this will be called the geometric realization functor, which realizes geometrically every simplicial set. And this actually has a right adjoint, which we will call the uh, singular simplicial set functor. Just, this is just a simplicial set with n simplices being continuous maps from the geometric realization to our topological space. And so now we'll first have to define to show the equivalence. We have to define what it means for the constructions to be equivalent. And for this, I unfortunately have to give only an informal definition. Well, we'll define a model structure on a category. And we think of this as encoding the homotopy data of the category. This is the right notion of structure for us because we only care about our infinity categories up to homotopy. So this will be given by three classes, weak equivalences, co-fibrations, and fibrations. These have to satisfy some axioms, but that'll be too long to cover here. You can just intuitionally think about this as weak equivalences will be something like homotopies. Both vibrations will be injections that respect homotopy, and vibrations will be surjections that respect homotopy. Now, with this, we can define a new notion of a junction, a pulling a junction, so that uh, the right adjoint. Uh, preserves vibrations, and the left adjoint uh, preserves co-vibrations. Now that we have this adjunction, we have a useful lemma that says the right adjoint actually uh, preserves weak equivalences of the vibration objects, and the left adjoint preserves weak equivalences of co-vibration objects. Now, with this lemma, we can give the definition of a equivalent equivalence. Now, this involves uh, right functors and localized categories, well, you can think of this as follows. Uh, localized categories are just obtained by formally inverting our morphisms. And the right functors are just the induced uh, operations from our adjunction to the homotopy categories. Now, with this, we can give the celebrated theorem of Pulling that says the model structure on set delta is actually equivalent equivalent to CG the model structure on CG. And with this, we show that our constructions are equal. Now, we give a little interlude uh, to show how we can obtain infinity categories out of some ordinary categories. Now, uh, the only thing uh, that I want you to remember here is that uh, TN corresponds to this diagram. Well, it can be shown as this diagram. And now with that, we can define what it means uh, to take the nerve of an ordinary category. Well, the nerve will just consist, it'll be a simplicial set, and it will just consist of zero simplices being objects, one simplices being uh, diagrams of length one, and n simplices being diagrams of length n. These will be just composable strings of objects with morphisms in between. And this will turn out to be the right adjoint 
of the map from before extended along the Uneda embedding. Uh, this, this you can think of as taking the simplices and joining them together to form a category. Now, of course, uh, given this definition, we can obtain a category uh, from its nerve because we know the objects, they're the zero simplices, and we know the morphisms, they're just going to be uh, given by the faces of uh, one morph, one simplices, and the composition will just be given uh, by applying faces to the two simplices. Now, with this, uh, we come uh, to the point where I want to give you an analogous definition uh, for set, well, analogous definition of set for infinity categories. So as you know, every category is enriched over set naturally in our ax, well, taking our axiom, it's enriched naturally over set. And we want to find an infinity category such that every infinity category is enriched over. Now, first to do this, we'll first note that every infinity zero category is actually a concomplex. Well, what does it mean to be a concomplex? It's just uh, when you have fillers for all horns and an infinity zero category has uh, morphisms which are invertible up to homotopy. All morphisms are invertible up to homotopy. So just filling this horn can be done by using the weak inverses and the uh, higher morphisms that uh, witness the composition. Okay, with this, it's natural to think that con, which is the full subcategory of set delta that uh, is spanned by con complexes, would be uh, the structure that we're looking for. But unfortunately, this is not the case since con is not an infinity category. But we know of a way to turn this into an infinity category by taking its nerve. So when we take its nerve, we define what, it, uh, what we call the infinity category of spaces. And it turns out that every infinity category is enriched over S. Well, there is a little remark that I should give here. It's that uh, taking the ordinary nerve uh, of a simplicial set actually forgets about the homotopical data. So if we want to uh, encode that too, we'll actually need to define what it means uh, to be a homotopy coherent nerve, which is basically done by, instead of asking for unique morphisms here, uh, we ask those to be the nerves, the ordinary nerves, of an, a pole set, basically. And this will allow us to uh, thicken our uh, nerve and to capture the homotopy data, if you, if you would. So that's all that I wanted to talk about. And these are my references. Thank you for listening. Uh, in a book. No, no. <laughs> 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 <laughs>